CSGO's Halloween update has come to an end. Biome and Sub-Zero didn't remain in casual for long. They've been moved into official competitive matchmaking. We can finally play and judge these maps. But they won't show up in tournaments just yet since they lack the Counter-Strike logo of approval, meaning that for now, Sub-Zero and Biome remain in reserve. It will no longer be a mystery as to why a player was kicked from the server. Here is a list of the messages that you might see, explaining the kick. The scoreboard has seen a few improvements. More stats have been added to Demolition and the Flying Scoutsman. As you can see here, Headshot Percentage, KD Ratio and ADR have been added to both. It now also supports any number of rounds. If max rounds is set to anything greater than 30, the counter bit in the middle disappears. Here, for example, is what a competitive map looks like on the 70th round. And lastly, that counter bit in the middle will now display the earliest round the match could end on, a trophy indicating which team could win it. Here, at the start of a game, it shows up on the 16th round for both teams, since either team at this point could potentially win 16-0. In this example, since terrorists won the first round, it shows the terrorists could win it by the 16th round. And here, since the counter-terrorists won the first round, it shows up on their side, indicating that they could win it on the 16th round. And now, since both teams have won a round, it shows the trophy for both teams again, but on the 17th round, since the best either team can manage now is a 16-1 win, hence taking 17 rounds total. I think I've spent enough time on this now. Last is Cobble, which has had more changes than you might have expected. It's no longer dark and spooky. But it's not back to how it was previously, either. They've made it sunnier than ever before. Previously it was all a bit cloudy and washed out looking, but now it's friendly and sunny, with nice blue shadows and everything. It's kind of like Nuke now. A bit of a story. Years ago, when I made my map, Disparity, I also made a nighttime version, and it was only then that I realised how many lights a map needed. I think that Valve must have had a similar revelation following Cobble's Halloween version, since the lights remain. It won't make a blind bit of difference to how the map plays, but it's nice to know that the map has been built upon, and has become a more functioning, practical place in the process. Now onto the actual changes. As you'd expect, the Halloween stuff has been removed. The fire pyre has been switched back to a statue that hopefully won't set you on fire and kill you. At least the floor fog is gone, and with it, the horrible smoke exploit that allowed you to see people where you shouldn't have been able to. And although they said they have reduced the number of coffins, many remain. Even after Halloween has ended, Cobble remains at least moderately spooky. When they say they've added lore to Bombsite A, I assume that they mean missiles, which are now hidden inside the coffins at the site. I don't know why they're there, but I'm sure it makes sense somehow. In my recent Halloween bugs video, Nailbomb pointed out an area portal bug to the windows on the terrorists' approach to B. So when Valve said in the patch notes that they had opened up windows from B halls towards site, I hoped they were referring to these. But no, they were talking about the ones on the other side, which will let you throw grenades into the site earlier than ever before. But be warned, I'm yet to throw a smoke that actually lands somewhere useful. I'm sure it can be done, but in competitive matches I'm expecting many spectacular grenading fails out and around these windows. Also, while we're here... Valve, please fix. The cover in the corridor leading to B is also gone, returning to how it was before, only more open since you can see that the boxes that were on the left hand side are now gone, and the shape of the cover once terrorists reach the site has also been changed. Very little remains for them to hide behind once they reach the site, and what is there can be shot through, even with a pistol. The boost in B has been opened back up again. I wasn't sure what they were doing with this when they blocked it off for the Halloween update, but now I guess they weren't sure either. The cover in this little room at A has been cut back and so has the clipping. This will give people here a bit more room to manoeuvre and to hide from terrorists pushing up the slope to A, particularly towards the back of the room. It is sad to see the gravestones gone in Bombsite A. You'll no longer be able to jump up onto them here. Gone is the three-man boost from the other side. And gone is this trick jump from the site into balcony, which I totally can do but we'll just show you with bullets for now. With the coffins having been replaced with barrels, the boost here will have changed a bit to do, so you may want to practice it to see where you can stand and what you can see from where and so on. And that's it. Follow me on Twitter.